Bonjour, Kirby Jambo AC. Welcome. Today we're going to do something a little different. Uh, this is not a lesson in beginners Louisiana French. This is not uh, French lessons for French American students or readings of some of my poems. Today we're going to talk a little bit about, a little bit more historically and culturally about the concept of what's known as French Louisiana uh, and who are French Louisianians, where is French Louisiana, what is French Louisiana, these concepts, you know. Um, French is very much associated with Louisiana. Um, I have an image here of a, the license plate that you can purchase here in Louisiana. You can get your own French license plate. Uh, as far as I know, it's the only license plate in the United States where the actual name of the state is not written in English. It's written in French. It's written in Louisiana. And it took kind of a, uh, a lot for us to, to get that. Uh, at the bottom, it says Chez Nous Autres, which means in, uh, in Louisiana French, which means our home, Chez Nous Autres. It has a, it has a picture of a flower known as... Um, and as La Glé Bleu, or the Purple Iris. And uh, so it's a license plate you can purchase to identify with your um, with idea concept that you are a French Louisianian, or French Louisiana is important to you. Many times in the national media, um, Louisiana gets, uh, all of Louisiana is considered the bayou, or Cajun country, all of Louisianians are Cajuns, or all of French Louisianians are considered Cajuns, and which is uh, absolutely not the case. I identify as a Cajun, I identify as a French Louisianian, but I am the first to tell you that that's not the case, that all of Louisiana is not French, all of Louisianians are not Cajuns, all of French Louisianians are not Cajuns. And uh, we're going to discuss what those terms mean. Uh, speaking of the term, we, all, we have the term Cajun, we have the term Cajun, we also have the term Creole, all right? Um, you know, Cajun become very popular, Kiss Me, I'm Cajun, uh, Cajun music, Cajun food, uh, very popular. Uh, some people make a strong distinction between Cajun and Creole. Others say, well, are, they are so intertwined, it's hard to make a distinction between the two. Um, we see that French is prevalent in Louisiana. When you enter Louisiana, it's written Bienvenue, uh, Bienvenue en Louisiane, uh, with the English written in English as well. We see that Louisiana is the only um, state that has actual an official agency to promote the a language, and that's to promote the French language, called CODOFIL, the Council for the Development of French in Louisiana. We have French immersion schools. Uh, we have um, we have certain flags too. We have this is a very um, uh, flag that many people know. It's uh, considered the French Acadian flag, a Louisiana Acadian flag, I should say or the uh, flag of Acadiana. Some places in Acadiana have adopted it, cities have adopted it as their official flag or the images of it, parts of it. It represents the, uh, it represents the star of, star represents the Acadians and the American element. The fleur-de-lis represent the French and the uh, Le Chateau, Les Tours, um, the castle there represents uh, Spain who welcomed when uh, the Acadians when they first arrived into Louisiana. Um, we also have a Creole, the Cre Louisiana Creole flag. It has a couple of different African uh, flags here and here. And of course, it has also the French and Spanish elements into it as well. So it represents the Creole flag. And we're going to talk about these concepts of Cajun and Creole in this little uh, lesson today. Um, now, first of all, um, where exactly is French Louisiana? And is it the same as what is known as Acadiana? Well, we'll talk about this from Acadiana. Uh, if you come down to uh, Lafayette, and you're going to see the television stations, they talk about Acadiana as being the region around Lafayette, the parishes around Lafayette as being Acadiana. And, uh, and uh, now um, you can see here this concept there. There are the seven parishes that they consider uh, compri comprise the Acadiana region. Now, the interesting thing is that's what the local media says is Acadiana. That's what, but however, what the state officially calls Acadiana is something different. Um, that's where the region and the state actually talks about um, a different region. But before we do that, let's talk about where the term comes from. And perhaps the television stations do have some, um, some reason to, a good reason to call it that. Uh, there are two apparent stories. Uh, one of them is that uh, in the mid-1950s, the Crowley Daily Signal coined the term in reference to Acadia Parish in Louisiana. Another one, in the early 1960s, KATC uh, was the, owned by the Acadian Television Corporation. And in 1963, they received an invoice that erroneously addressed to, erroneously addressed to the Acadiana Television Corporation rather than the Acadian Television Corporation. So the station used it, began to start using it. So it seemed like the origin, the television stations were the first ones to start using the term. So they would have good reason to continue to describe their viewing area as Acadiana. But what eventually happened is that 
uh, Acadiana became much larger. Eventually, the state um, described a much larger region as Acadiana. Uh, it's actually a region of 22 parishes. And basically, it's the parishes where um, either that they had a, um, a good number of French-speaking uh, population or a good number or a, of a people of Acadian descent. Those two elements were in there, the French-speaking population and Acadian descent. And they used the term Acadiana. The interesting thing is that, that um, they used the, the, the Acadian element um, didn't, uh, some regions there, although they identified with the Acadian element, they actually did not have a great deal of Acadian immigrants into that area. So it's kind of an interesting, uh, something interesting happened along the way. Now, uh, sometimes Louisiana is divided between the North, the South, and New Orleans. They're kind of like um, sometimes people divide France, the, the, the North of France, the South of France, and, and Paris, the, the La Ville, the city of Paris, have distinct cultures. And this, there is there is a kind of a difference between the North and the culturally difference between the North and the South and New Orleans. They kind of have three different cultures. Now, of course, there are a lot of um, difference within, differences within those areas as well. But um, the, sometimes we describe it as that. Um, the North being more like the rest of the Southern South, what is called the Bible Belt. Uh, um, you find less of the French influence, although it's there. Um, less of the Roman Catholic influence, although it's there as well. Uh, in the South, you, it's a more of the more Roman Catholic, more French influence. New Orleans has a French influence, but also had this want the mix, the metropolitan mix, which created um, New Orleans, but also uh, based as a you know as as a French colony and a Spanish colony as well. Now, um, this is a according to an identification in the census where we can see uh, parishes that were persons identified using the term Cajun. Okay, and you can see here. Uh, the darker parishes, those parishes here, those are where you've all the, to the southeast you have Lafouche, all the way over here down to Cameron Parish. You have um, you have different parishes like um, you have Saint Martin and Vermilion, Acadia, uh, different parishes as well. And then the secondary area, that little bit area here from Terrebonne all the way up to Saint Landry Parish, those areas there, those are the larger areas where people identify as Cajun. On the outskirts, much uh, less identified as Cajun. Now, that does not necessarily uh, mean that those were the areas where they had the most of French speakers. Um, the state divides the region a little differently. The state, as far as like in tourism, they like to divide it up into three areas. They call this northern area sportsman's paradise. This middle area, that was sometimes known as Sinla, central Louisiana, is called um, the crossroads. They call all this area Cajun country, but leave out a part of it, Acadiana, actually. And uh, they call this area plantation country, and uh, the area around New Orleans, they call the greater New Orleans area. Although the culture north of, the, of New Orleans would be, might be quite different than the culture within the city of New Orleans as well. And there are a lot of overlaps. So, But this is more for uh, touristic regions, you might see, you might say. Um, these are the percent of French language ancestry. Now, you can, the darker areas, this is where you find more of the French area, and then, and then the secondary groups, this little area is here. And you would see they would coincide, um, for the most part, with folks identifying as Cajun. So you see why there was this relationship between people identifying as Cajun and people identifying with French ancestry. But it's not unique to that, because you can see French ancestry going all the way up here to Natchitoches, which was actually the one of the very first, um, I believe, the very first settlement uh, that the French colonists uh, made in Louisiana. Um, now, we're talking about the term Creole. Creole is, um, is a related language to French. Some people put it as just a variety of French, but linguists today would probably give it to it, uh, enable it a distinct language from French. And in these areas here, you see, uh, this is where the, lang the, the language we call, they call Louisiana Creole is spoken more often. And you notice some certain, some similarities, like especially in the center area, uh, where it's considered the, where the television area, uh, television stations say is Acadiana, it is both a Cajun area, both a French-speaking area, and both a Creole-speaking area. But other areas outside of that area uh, identify as have Creoles, okay? You have over here toward the southeast, toward the north. But other areas that have a strong Cajun and French area, like, for example, in Lafouche Parish, down in Cameron and thing, in the south of Cameron down there, and was that uh, Vermilion Parish, um, don't have as many Creole speakers. So it's kind of interesting that we see that along the way. Um, I saw this thing I thought was kind of interesting. I'm not sure I agree with everything in it, but I saw it was kind of interesting. They identify certain parishes as Cajun parishes, the darker green or darker blue, depending on how it looks on your screen. Those are the areas that they call Cajun parishes. Um, the more um, 
the middle range here, let's say this here, this is the area that they call, uh, that are presumed to be um, Creole, um, mixture Cajun and Creole. And then you have a couple of them like here, all the way in New Orleans and up here here that are considered only Creole. Now, I would say to some degree, there is, um, there is some truth to that. There is um, more persons identifying as Cajun and Creole in these certain regions. Uh, the darker regions, more persons would identify as Cajun, and the mixed, that middle region, more people desire the more as either Cajun or Creole, and then other regions like New Orleans is more identified as Creole. So we're gonna talk about those terms uh, in a minute, okay? Now before we do that, before we talk, before we do that, let's talk about the different groups of, of French people. Now you, you can't see all these, but I want you to note, I want you to see this list. I know it's hard for you to read unless you kind of are able to blow up the image, but this is a list of all the different French-speaking groups uh, which, who immigrated to Louisiana. Uh, uh, you have Les Voyageurs, that was the original 1699 Canadian settlers, the voluntary French immigrants from the John Law era, early 18th century forced immigrants, the French military personnel, the Alsa Alsatian religious exiles, the Acadian exiles, the Saint-Domingue uh, refugees after the slave revolts, the French Revolution refugees, the Bonapartist exiles, uh, les Français et étrangers, as the, the foreign French who came in the 19th century. Uh, Belgian and Swiss immigrants. French Jews fleeing persecution on the German border. French, Belgian, Canadian, and Catholic missionaries. Alsatian and Lorrainier, uh refugees from, Franco, from the Franco-Prussian uh, War. Uh, Francophone Lebanese Christian immigrants. 20th century French and Belgian war brides. European and French Canadian teachers. Francophone Vietnamese, Cambodian, and Laotian uh, refugees. Uh, not to mention large numbers of other cultural groups who came to adopt the French language in Louisiana. Africans, Spanish, Germans, Italians, English, uh, Scottish, Irish. Many different groups began came to adopt the French language in Louisiana. Now, let's talk a little bit, and we'll for our, before we end this little discussion today, let's talk a little bit about these concepts, Cajun and Creole. Okay, we talk about this concept of Cajun and Creole. Um, Cajun uh, is a term used to describe, most, most, most people try to describe it as being the same thing as Acadian. In French, the terms are Acadien and Cajun. Cajun is the term we use for Cajun, Acadien pour um, Acadian. Although in old Acadian uh, French, uh, Acadien would be pronounced Acadien with that same J sound as we see here. Now, though folks, um, I, I, now I'm not, I'm saying this purely as my own opinion and my own perspective. Um, but for me, Cajun, what a Cajun is, is, is basically a French Louisianian uh, who has some kind of connection or an important connection to Acadians, to the Acadians or to the Acadian history in some sense. It doesn't have to be that, but for me, that's what it means. So when I say, Cajun, I'm a Cajun, I mean, I'm a French Louisianian uh, I mean, I'm a Louisianan, either French-speaking Louisianan or a Louisianan from a from a French ancestry, uh, or a Louisianan who uh, from uh, whose ancestors spoke French. Or uh, and I have a K either I have some Acadian ancestry, or I appreciate Cajun culture, or, K or Acadian culture, or Acadian culture is important to me. For me, the reason I, I claim that is because although we a lot of what we qualify as um, qualify as uh, Cajun food and Cajun music, a lot of the elements in there would not particularly be Acadian. There are certain elements that are very essential to who I am as a person that I see in similarity with uh, with Acadians. When I meet Acadians from, uh, from, uh, from up in the Maritime Provinces, for example, there is something we share. Um, it's not always, um, it's not always tangible, but it is something very, uh, it is a sense of history, but it's also, uh, it's in, we see when in our sense of humor in our, just the way we look at life, uh, there are some similarities. It's not the same at all, not the same, but there's similarities. And so for me, when I say I'm Cajun, I mean, I share, uh, an identity with that. I share in, um, that perspective. Um, but I can also say that I'm Creole because for me, what Creole means, Creole means um, Louisiana natives who either speak Frank, French or who come from, uh, who are descendants of people who use the French language. Now, people would like to give you all kinds of different definitions of what Creole means. Uh, some people attribute Creole to meaning um, not Acadian, which I don't believe is true. I think in a sense, Cajuns are also Creoles. Although we never used the term when I was growing up, we never used the term Creole to describe ourselves. That was always someone else because we did, we were more of a, uh, we, we either call ourselves Cajun, Cajun, or Francais, French. Uh, but some areas, um, 
Um, today, the persons would describe themselves as Cajun, or, uh, uh, and in the past, uh, their parents may have described, grandparents and so forth, may have described themselves as Creole. And um, some people are trying to recapture that, which is, a, which is, which is all their right and a good thing. Um, so Creole could be considered, um, um, Creole would, was, for me, that was what Creole is. It was a, as a native French Louisianian, uh, who, um, uh, or a native Louisianian who uses the French language. Um, in the, uh, I've heard of stories in the old days, for example, when, the, when the, if a French, um, immigrants arrived and they arrived with a child, that child would be considered Francais, French. But if they had a baby in Louisiana, that would be leur bébé créole because uh, because that baby was born in Louisiana. It would be a Creole baby. Um, some people describe Creole specifically having to do with race, although some people would definitely dispute that um, because and I and and then you'll see it on and it been the reason I think I dispute it as well because it's <laughs> depending on the concept of race, depending what you what, what Creole means. Um, there are folks who say Creole means African American. There are folks who. Creole, who means a mixture of African American and European ancestry, and there are actually a, a, a few folks, like in the New Orleans area, who insist that Creole means European French uh, Spanish, not African American. But whatever definition you use for Creole is okay; it's your definition. Uh, but please be understood that somebody else might have a different def might identify as Creole and might be very different. So you will have Creoles of strictly European descent. You will have persons of strictly um, who have mixed ancestry, European African descent, and you will have your Creoles who are pretty much of African descent. And um, all of that is fine. Um, so, and of course, in a global sense, Cajuns are, even though I don't use the term Creole like on the other base, I wouldn't introduce myself as a Creole, but if you would say, if you wanted me to describe me as a, I am a native French Louisianian, in that sense, Je Creole, but it's never a term that I use. I have ancestors who may have identified as Creole, but more often than not, we simply identified ourselves as either Francais, French, or Cajun, Cajun. So when we tend to use the term Cajun to describe everything, it's it's actually an injustice. And I'm not saying that to not be proud of who I am. I'm proud to be a Cajun, je suis fier d'être Cajun. But I'm saying that because I think we need to respect all of the different French cultures and other cultures who use the French language who affected and who influenced who we are today. A lot of what we taste in the cuisine is more what we call Creole. It's native to Louisiana. It's it's the French and the other and the French and the other uh, immigrant groups and the Native American groups together, due to the environment in which we live, which created the sort of cuisine that we have, which influenced the sort of music we have. Now, of course, did the uh, Acadians influence? Yes, of course. And we're not going to dismiss that influence of the Acadians. And like I said, for some time, for me, sometimes the influence of the Acadians is a little more subtle. Uh, or for me, it's more, in a sense, it's more subtle, but yet it's also more uh, um, in in, our, in my heart. I feel that kind of, uh, uh, that Acadian attachment. Uh, even though, like, for example, my last name is not an Acadian name. Yeah, my last, my fam that last name came about when, uh, when during the 19th century, when les Français étrangers, the foreign French arrived, immigration there. But I do have a, about 85% of my ancestry is French. And out of that 85 cent, 85 percent, about uh, about 45 or 40 to 45 percent of that is our Acadian ancestors. But there are who came, some who came directly from France. I do have a French ancestors who came by way of Quebec, down from Canada that way. And I also have uh, some other ancestors in there. I mean, I have about 15 percent, 10 percent of it is Spanish from the Canary Islands and other places and uh, Mexico. And then I have a little bit of a mixture of a, maybe a few other things like Scottish, English and Italian in there. But my majority French. So for me, I'm a Frenchman, I'm a Louisianian, I'm a Cajun, I'm a Creole, je suis Cajun, je suis Creole, je suis franco louisianais je suis Francais, je suis tout ça. I'm all of that. And I'm proud of it. Don't think I'm better than anybody else or a culture than anybody else, but I love my culture and I and I hope that you love your culture too. So, you know, one of the things I see these days is that with this connectivity that we're sharing for good or for bad. And uh, I think it's important to realize that we as French Louisianans share our part of this world and we, uh, we, we have something to say and something to offer. And so this is what I'm offering to you today. Okay. So I'll talk uh, more about French Louisiana at a later time, but I want to make this first little uh, video of this type for today. And I hope you have a good day. Soignez-vous, soignez les autres. Y'all take care et on va soir. Bye.